for my kids. I don't know how powerful it is, but hey, it gives you a little bit more liberty than just being stuck right here. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, I was out of town. Some of you probably thought I backslid, but I didn't. I was out of town, and uh, I went to St. Louis. I told Sister Wilson I was going to her stomping grounds. And as a matter of fact, I let her know St. Louis is still down there. It's still alive. And, uh, but, hey, I want you to say this with me. Lifestyle evangelism. Now, some of you will say, what in the world is lifestyle evangelism? Well, I have purposed within my heart that before my Uncle Gary checks out of this world, that if, if he never personally talks with Jesus Christ on this side of the veil, that he's definitely going to get to see an opportunity or hear an opportunity of one that has talked with Jesus Christ on this side of the veil. Knowing that there's a walk that you can walk right now. There's a heaven that can be experienced right now, right where you're at, right now. And so I went, I went down there. We went down there for a bottling convention. You'll say, bottling? What in the world's that? It's where people like me they, that like old bottles get together. There was 130 tables full of people just like me, some a little bit more eccentric than I am. And uh, so anyway, we get in there. And young people, I want you to hear something. This is really, really important. If you don't even catch anything else I say today, listen to this good. And older people, listen to this as well. My son goes around. Now, they have a terminology called uh, being a Jew when you make a purchase. Okay? Meaning that you're trying to get it for the least amount of money you possibly can. Okay? Whether you offend the person or not. Amen? Anybody ever been there before? I, I've known people that will go to a rum and sale, and if it says a quarter, they'll say, would you take a nickel? Okay? I, I've, I've seen people like that. I know people like that. I promise you. They're, hey, they're going to get everything they can for their money, which, bless God, I understand. I work very hard for my money most of the time, and I understand the value of a dollar nowadays. So I'm down there, and I'm buying a, a few things. I give myself a $40 limit. Okay, of what I'm about to spend here. And uh, my son comes up to me, Stephen. I love this young man to pieces. But how many people in here know that young people need to learn lessons? And one of the lessons I wanted to teach him was, you don't have to beat somebody down on a price and get a good product from them. I said, what if you have to go back to that person again one day I said, how will they respond when they see your face again? I told him, he said, Dad, you paid too much for that bottle. I said, you know what? I said, I might have. I said, but you know what? I said, I like to plant what they call good seeds. And when I plant seeds, they have value. Okay? And I believe that when you plant a seed that has value, something special is going to grow inside that seed. And he went around, and his, his bottles or, or jars, his mason jars, he, he didn't pay no more than $6 a piece. And I was paying 10 He said, you just overpaid, Dad. I said, I know I did. I said, but you know what? I said, I'll be able to approach any of these people at the next sale. And they're not going to look at me like, oh, God. Here comes that guy. Hey, my uncle, I, wor I, wor I witnessed this, folks. You ready for this? He talks this guy down on this jar from $20 down to $8. Are you ready for this? Then when he goes time to pay for it, he hands the guy 20 and asks for change back. And the guy said this to him. I'm standing, I'm uncomfortable. I'm standing right next to Gary. I'm uncomfortable because this guy just looks at him and says, he said, you just talked me down to a price to where I'm making no money on this thing. And now you want to give me, let me give me change back to you? When obviously you had the money in the first place. And you'll say to yourself, Brother Thornton, why would you even lead out on a message like this? It's about character. We serve a God that has more character. <laughs> I mean more character than anyone I've ever come across in my life. Matter of fact, when you give him a quarter, he would consider it an insult just to give you a quarter back. 
He wants to give you above and beyond. Now, if that same Father lives in me, wouldn't that nature want to pour out of me too? And trust me, I don't have a bank account that reflects abundance, okay? But I have a heart inside that says, let's treat them right. Let's really let them know that they had a Christian in front of them today. They didn't have somebody just wanting something for nothing. They had somebody that's real and genuine in front of them. Do I always have character? No. I got a Kirby, uh, Kirby vacuum cleaner one time at a rummage sale, and I don't know what came over me for 40 bucks. They had the price of 80 bucks on there, but I didn't have 80 with me, Sister Pope. I had 40. So I just threw out a number, and they took it. You know, I felt kind of bad about that. I'm bragging to somebody at work. I said, you know what, I got a Kirby vacuum cleaner for 40 bucks. And then it kind of dawned on me. I bet they never want to see my face again. You know, it's stuff like this. You know, <laughs> I, anyhow, I know. I'm that guy that just ain't got nothing good to say. I know, man. But I, I wanted to have Stephen learn a lesson. Do I think Stephen has completely learned the lesson? No. But I do know this. I'm not hurt by paying up on something if it's worth it. I'm not saying go out there and pay twice the much for something that isn't, you know? Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that alone. If you have the ability, would you stand with me, please? We're going to read Romans 8 and 11. And before you go throwing out any old bottles, I did go to one guy's table. That one bottle was worth $12,000. So there is value out there in some stuff that we don't see the value in because there's only two known in the whole entire world and there was one on that table and the other one I don't know where it was. $12,000 for a piece of glass. And I said to myself, and then he tries to con us in. He says, hey, don't buy anything less than $1,000 because that stuff always decreases in value. He said, but if you buy 1000 and up, it'll always increase. He's talking to the wrong audience there, buddy. Ten dollars as high as I go. But anyway, I'm not going to keep you standing here. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Let's pray. Father, I am so thankful for this opportunity. I don't take it lightly, so whatever I say today, let it be filtered through love and through your cross and through your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Find two people, shake their hands before you sit down since you're already standing, please. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the message, I titled this, The Fruit of Love. Probably even used that title before, but I can't get around it. Hallelujah. The fruit of love. I was, uh, I was studying probably, I want to say it was Thursday, I think it was. Thursday or Friday this week. And I was just trying to get something flowing in my mind besides something on television. How many people in here know it's real easy to watch TV, and whatever you've watched on TV just keeps kind of regurgitating in your mind. Amen? So I'm listening to this gentleman, and he's talking about love. And this is the guy I've spoke about before. Matter of fact, in 20 years, he hasn't gotten mad since he had love rebaptize him. Okay? And so that's a testimony right there. I wish I could go, I wish I could go a full two months without getting mad, let alone 20 years. But this gentleman, he said something that was so unique that stuck with me. Anybody ever have, have a dart stuck in you when somebody said something that stuck? And sometimes it's always, sometimes in the bad, but this was for the good. He says, when you squeeze oranges, he said, what do you get? Of course, you know, orange juice, right? He said, but what do you get when you squeeze a Christian? And I thought about that. I really did, Brother Martin. I thought about that. Because sometimes when we're squeezed, 
there's stuff that comes out of us that's not supposed to be in the fruit of love, right? And that's when this Dan guy says, he, he had actually spent overnight with another minister. Anybody ever room with somebody that's not on the same schedule as you are? I've got two boys that are night owls. And, and so then I, I'll hear stuff at all hours of the night sometimes when I'm trying to sleep. So Dan, he's going to a conference that both of these gentlemen are supposed to speak at. And the one gentleman comes in about 1.30, 2 in the morning. And anybody ever hear the hotel doors when they shut? They don't have a quiet sound to them. You can try to go into one of those hotel rooms quietly. It ain't going to work. You'll hear that, ching, you know, that slam. And then you're up. Well, this guy come walking in, and, and then he wants to start talking to Dan. Well, Dan's got to preach the next day. And he's wanting to talk, and he, he talks for probably about 45 minutes. And Dan tells him, he says, hey, buddy. He said, we got to get up early in the morning, buddy. You know, being real, real nice-spirited. You know, just really nice spirited. And so this other guy keeps him up. And the next day, he says, you know, I'm, I apologize for keeping you up. I'm sorry about that. He said, you never got mad at me once. Every time I kept trying to wake you up and talk to you some more, you never got mad at me once. And he says, he says, you're really trying to live this thing called love, aren't you? He said, well, you squeeze, squeeze a Christian. What's supposed to come out is love. So I wanted to share that with you because this. That morning I had listened to that, and then I got to work. Anybody in here ever experienced having to do somebody else's work for them? Because they know that you can do the job, and the other person, maybe not so much. So instead of increasing your pay, they just increase your load. Anybody ever been there? Okay. Normally that will frustrate us, correct? So I step into work, and see, I've got this squeeze in a Christian thing going through my brains. I've got this squeeze in a Christian thing like, what would really come out of me, God, if you really put the squeezes on me? And so I show up to work, and I talk to my boss, Ron, and Ron tells me, he says, I'd like you to start working up on this, because it's my department, it's my building, okay? So I get all the stuff gathered up, I'm getting ready to go up there. And then the phone call comes. Anybody ever just hear that ring? Ring, ring, you know, and wonder, what, what's on the other end of this line? And it happened to be my boss. And he says, uh, they're needing help over there in this other department. They're, they're short some millwrights, would like for you to go over there and help out. Well, there are certain people out there that will throw what they call a fit. Anybody ever seen anybody throw a real fit? Okay. But thankfully... God just kind of put a piece on me about the whole thing and said, it's okay, just go over there. You're getting paid the same either here or you're getting paid the same if you're going over there. You're just having to do somebody else's work over there. So I didn't even have a complaining word in my mouth, which ain't even normal because sometimes I'm just right there with everybody else wanting to complain, hop on the complaining train. Hey, hey it's got plenty of room, lots of seats. You know how many seats is on the complaining train? Lots of seats. So this one time, I actually took a different train. It was a train apiece. I go over there, and in order to get from one floor to another, they have elevators. They call them man lifts. So I go over there, and I make it to the second floor where the man lift is, and all of a sudden, I can see some stuff blowing down. We have grating in some of our floors, meaning that whatever's a floor above you can filter down through this grating. Okay, well, there's this guy up there with a, a with a wand and a hose, and he's blowing down all this dust, and it's just it's raining down on me. I take my shirt, put it over my nose, because it's the only dust mask I got with me, and I just stand there waiting for the elevator to come. So and I open the door and get in there, and I go up. See, I don't know this, but Brother James Jones is the guy up there with the hose. He works in that department. Didn't even know he was on that day. I go up there and I do the work, and uh, thankfully they didn't need me all day. And I come back down, and Brother James, he calls me over. He says, hey, come on. And out there it's so loud. The way we communicate is we don't talk face to face. You go right next to their ear, okay? You put your 
If this is their head right here, you go right next to their ear and you talk to their ear. Because they've got earplugs in and there's all kinds of noises going on. So I get over there and he says, I am so sorry that I blew that stuff all over you. Okay? And I said, it's fine, brother. And you know what I got to share with him? Are you ready for this one? He said, when you, I said, when you squeeze an orange, what do you get? See, I didn't know I was going to get to use it, see? I didn't know I'd get to live it. I got to live it. See, it's one thing just to talk about this. But when you get the opportunity to live it, and, and you'll say, well, Brother Thornton, you failed the other nine times out of ten. Big deal. I'm making progress, friend. I'm making progress. The one time that I got a chance to let Jesus shine, and he oh, blew his mind when I got to the place after I said, when you squeeze oranges, you get orange juice. I said, when you squeeze a Christian, what is supposed to flow out of them? And I said, love. I said, that's really the only thing that's supposed to squeeze out of us is love. And, and blew his mind. He says, he says, I love talking to you. He says, you just inspire me. Now, wouldn't it be nice if our every day was like that to where you knew, you knew that there's going to be 12 people in line for you to inspire that day, and you're going to walk out feeling things that you've never felt before, touching God in ways you've never touched him before, just because you allowed yourself to be used for those 12 people. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? So that brother James, he encouraged me. I, didn't, I had no idea it would have that big of an impact on him, but he needed that for that day. Anybody ever have a word in due season come and you hit you at the right time? I mean the right time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so good to us. Got to turn the page here. Hallelujah. Could we clap our hands one more time to the Lord? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry, I'm a little excited here, but uh, speaking of foreign language, how many in here with the, with the raising of a hand know a foreign language? Okay. We've got about three, four. We've got about four or five people in here that knows a foreign language. I, I heard recently this gentleman talk, and I mean, he got me to thinking about something here. He said, just because you can speak a foreign language doesn't mean you're from that country. He got to speaking and said, you know what? He said, we can speak Christianity so fluently sometimes. It'll flow right out of us. The right things to say. I'm in church. I know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, brother and sister. It flows. We, we have got that language down, right? And then this guy says, doesn't mean that you reside in that country. And I thought to myself, how many times do I have the language right, but the heart isn't behind what the language is speaking? Does that make sense what I'm saying? I really want to not just, I don't want to be a visitor to the country of love. I want to abide. I want, I want, I want these feet to stay steadfast in the country of love. And you'll say, well, what, what kind of fruit does a country of love bear? I haven't seen all the fruits just yet. But I can tell you this, there's more than what I can handle in the country of love. In the country of love, you can take every worry, doubt, and fear that you have, and there's places for it to be sat down. You can sit them down. You don't have to carry certain things in this country. You, you can walk with the Lord. I'm talking about and experience things, and then people don't get under your skin like Pastor Wilson talked about today is when you get those people that make you angry and how they're controlling you, even though we don't want to admit that they're controlling us. But really, if they do, I got a plant manager right now that I had no clue that this being squeezed. What do you get when you squeeze an orange? Orange juice. What do you get when you squeeze a Christian? Had no idea that for two plus months or better, I've been harboring bad feelings towards this guy. He had said something that was wrong and mean about me. Come into the shop. My work's all done. I'm helping these other guys get their work done. My work's done. 
Every time I come in this shop, I see you sitting down. Woo! Woo! I said, hey, why don't we sit down and talk like men? I'm, I'm wanting to talk. It's better than getting back up and just yelling in his face, because I'll be honest, it was there. It was there. I was being squeezed. I didn't see it. Kind of like the phone rings you don't know on the other end. I didn't see it coming, Brother Martin. Did not see it at all. Come in there, and he already had an attitude. You ever come across those people that already got an attitude before you even talked to them that day? And they want to put that nasty attitude on you. Hey, no, that's when you just you get that Christian Teflon on you, see? It's called love. It lets, it lets it all slide right on off where it's supposed to. Amen? Amen? Amen. I didn't know I was still harboring bad feelings towards my plant manager. But when this, when this Dan guy talk, started talking about love again and talking about what was getting squeezed out of me, this is when the Lord, and not in a rebuking way, because see, the God I serve loves me so much that he knows how to present himself to me. He don't come with a ball bat and wear me out, okay? He comes with a soft word, a kind word that says, you know what? You're allowing something to mess with you that you don't have to, okay? Let this man receive the love that I know I've placed in you, okay? There ain't a whole lot of rebuke in there, but I've been festered. It's like that splinter that you didn't even know you had. And all of a sudden, it works itself up there, and you say, huh, didn't even know that was there. Didn't even show any signs of a real infection. That's what God wants to do. That's what love wants to do for us, is it wants to point out all the areas that we could be used greater in. Now, I know this is for a fact. Everybody in here wants to be greatly used of God, correct? Amen. And when you're greatly used of God, that comes with a great responsibility. He wants to put more responsibility on us and let us see things like we have never seen them before. I want to be that guy that he can say, you know what? I can send anybody his way and there won't be a single offense land on him. I'm not there yet. (laughs) Please Please don't come and try me on this today. I am not there yet. But for at least one day of my life, he just got to talking to me about orange juice talking to me about squeezing a Christian. And friend, I got to be honest. The only thing I want in me at the end of the day is his love, mercy, and compassion to where whoever needs it, whomsoever will, I'd be able to pour it out by the bucket loads on whoever came in my path that day. Now see, if I blow up, if I blow up in my department and tell them, this ain't right how you're treating me. I'm not going over there to the prep department. I'm staying over here. Do I get a chance to see Brother James that day? Do you see how he intricately weaves us through our days? And you get that one checkout lady that she is slow as molasses. We've all had them. If you want to be in a store a long time, you come with me. You'll, they'll have 24 lanes there, and I'm going to pick the slowest lane, I assure you. But you know what I've already done? I've already said it in my mind that says, I'm here whether it's half an hour or an hour, and I'm going to display what God wants me to display. Have I swapped lines? You you bet I've swapped lines. I've come over to this line, and they get slow. The light goes on. And I'm thinking to myself, God, how can I get out and around this whole patience thing? But you won't because he loves you. And he wants to take and refine you. And he wants to take all those things that hinders you. What doth hinder you? What doth hinder you? And if we don't know that answer, it's hard to get removed what we don't even know we need, right? So I'm so thankful this day that God is allowing me to just see what, what's really in a Christian. What's really in us. Turn to your neighbor and say, Balance. Thank you, Lord. But what matters is that hallelujah. 
the ear. Point at your own ear. Just give it a little tug. There you go. I know it sounds completely ridiculous, right? You have an outer ear, a middle ear, and an inner ear. We're going to focus today on the inner ear, okay? This is the part that communicates with the brain. This does not communicate with my brain. Yes, if it gets pulled on, I can feel it. But the most important part of your ear is going to be that inner ear. This is where your balance is all at. Anybody, hey, anybody been in here dizzy before? Anybody been in here before where you almost feel sick? The balance in your ears. And you'll say, why did God put balance at this point right here in our bodies? Because he understands something. That these ears have a whole lot more purpose than just listening to honky-tonk music. Amen? Or listening to complaining and murmuring. These ears right here, signs that the ear is clogged, falling or problems walking, blurred vision, slurred speech, and severe neck stiffness. Oh, oh ye stiff-necked people. He would, he would, Jesus constantly say, you know what? You're dull of hearing. You can't hear a word I'm saying. Do you know why you can't hear a word I'm saying? Because that inner ear won't allow. You're all clogged up with the cares of this life. This is what Christ was trying to tell them Pharisees and those Sadducees and letting them know, guess what? But if you can have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to what? To the church. Anybody in here just by a slight wave wants to know what the Spirit is saying to the church? Hey, I want to know what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. I want, every right now, please right now, just bow your heads with me, close your eyes, and say, Lord, heal my inner ear. And you'll say, well, I can hear God pretty good. Hey, I'm telling you right now, every one of us in here could hear more things if we had a very healed inner ear. And I'm telling you right now, that's, this is my focus, this is my prayer right now, that heal their inner ear. Even people that don't have the Spirit of God, that's going to be my prayer. God, heal their inner ear. Let them have a balance to this thing. Let them have an understanding to this thing. Let them be on a track to where they're not thinking that they're crazy when God starts speaking to them. Oh, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you what? What's it say? Anybody in here wanting rest? Friend, they don't make enough hours in the day to want to sleep in my bed. I promise you. Promise you. Rooted and grounded in love. And I've got about ten more minutes here, folks. If my fingers will work here. I was watching a program about trees. You'll say, that's kind of boring, Brother Thornton. I know. Trees are boring. But you can learn a lot. There was, in the northwest, an entire forest that had fell down. The entire forest fell down. Wasn't one tree standing in the forest fell down. So they, they did a little bit of a, a study to try to figure out what's going on. Would say they had a, a, an easterly wind that night. See, these trees always see wind from the west or the southwest. So do you know what their roots did? They grew strong on that side. Since they didn't get any kind of opposition from the east, why grow roots on that side real deep? But then there came a storm. Say this with me. There came a day. <laughs> there came a day. To what they thought they was rooted and grounded against didn't work. And you'll say, well, Brother Thornton, you're telling me every one of these trees failed because they didn't have a good root system. The Bible talks to us about being rooted and grounded in what? So if I don't have a good root system, because we already know the tests are coming, right? Anybody in here lived this long without a single test? I don't see, I don't see one hand. I assure you today. And the test will keep coming because the, the tests are there to help you. You learn so much by the test. 
I wish I could go back and tell you all the things that I have learned just within the last six years of all the different testings that I've had in my life. But I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's kind of like a child being born. You, you wouldn't want another one, but you wouldn't take over a million dollars for the one you got, right? Amen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, is those tests, if we would look at them as Christ looked at them and understand that, you know what, all it's doing is letting me know how deep my roots go, right? And wouldn't you want to know how deep your root system is before the storm comes? A test may not be a full-blown storm. It may be just a little wind. And you'll say, man, I can handle that. That's almost like a gentle breeze. It takes a little sweat off my brow. Not, not understanding that there may be a bigger test coming behind that one, that all of a sudden it, it, it just lets us know that the root system. Amen? Anybody understand the root system today? All your nutrients for that tree above the ground You'll say, well, it rains on the leaves and it does all this kind of other stuff. Hey, that root system is the heartbeat of that tree. And then you'll even think to yourself, well, how come does a palm tree, how can they can survive storms and other trees can't? Hey, they go down so deep and so wide outstretched because they understand that the storms are coming. It's just a matter of time. They know the storms are coming. You'll say, so you're telling me that in my life, my love for God is going to be tested. Sure as I'm standing here, hey, I guarantee within a week's time, you'll come across at least someone in there in this world or this lifetime that Jesus will make sure that you get to have your presence in. Because does light shine better with other light or in darkness? And it shines even brighter the darker it gets, right? And I've got to believe this. I am, a, I am a light. Raise your hand if you believe you're a light of Christ. i got to believe that I am a light of Christ and that there will be times when I'm put in dark situations. And I've got to believe that he didn't just want me to just turn my night, my night light off for just a minute. i got to believe that there is more to this shining stuff than I can understand. I got to believe that there's lives that he really wants changed and he wants to use you and you and you and you and you and you and you to do that changing. Isn't that an awesome responsibility? Parents already know that, guess what? All my kids look up to us parents, right? And if we're trying to set a good example, you know, we could do good things, right? But friend, there's a world out there that we, if we could become the sons and the daughters, okay? Really be the sons. Matter of fact, I believe the Bible said that the whole earth groaneth for the manifestation of the sons of God. I believe this is our hour. I really do. I'm closing right now. I believe this is our hour that if you really want an opportunity to shine, ask the Lord to let his love root system Go down deeper than it ever has before. And you'll say, oh, I don't want to pray that prayer because I know he's going to send somebody my way. And he will. But they're going to come whether or not you pray that prayer or not, right? It, I would rather be prepared, let that Boy Scout in me say, you know what? Since I already know it's coming, you know, it's kind of like the mortgage. You already know it's due towards the first of the month. You know, they kind of give you a date when the mortgage is due. And it would be ridiculous for me to go out and spend the money for the mortgage and then turn around and be mad because I don't have the money for the mortgage. That makes no sense, does it? So now that he already lets you know that the love that you're going to need to love your brother and sister or those that you don't even know who your brother and sister is yet, it's on the way. I'm sending you the love right now. In the name of Jesus, if you bow your heads with me right now, please, we're going to pray this. Father... I thank you for not only healing our root system and developing our root system, but allowing us to understand the importance of this root system. Allowing us, dear God, to understand that when I am squeezed, there's something that comes out of me that can be a blessing to others. Would you please, God, let our feet be steadfast and stand in the country of love, not 
not hopping on the train of com complaining and murmuring. But I want these feet to be steadfast. Plant us in your love so deep that all we could do when we are squeezed and when the winds blow and when the trials come is just display your light in such a beautiful manner. And you'll say, what in the world's a tree displaying light for? Friend, he has done some amazing things before. I'm letting you know right now, you are a tree that has been planted in his garden. There's nobody here by accident. And you'll say, well, I don't know about that. Brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, I'm not sure God planted them here. I assure you, anybody that's in this assembly right now, you have been planted by a divine spirit, friend. And you're not here by accident. You're here to grow, mature, and branch out like you've never branched before. So when you look around and say, well, there may not be a whole lot of numbers here, but guess what? He found you important enough to be a part of this group, part of this system. And this system right here is going to grow in love. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you so much for this day. I pray your blessings upon each and every one of us that we would walk out these doors today with such a peace, such a joy, and such a love that somebody would just stop us and say, I want what you have. I want to know the God that you serve. Would you please pray for me, pray for my hearing, pray for my inner ear, that I could know the love of God like you know the love of God. In Jesus' name, God bless you today. If you have an opportunity to just say anything to Christ, let him know how thankful you are. Let him know how much he means to you. And I'll assure you this. As parents, we love to hear our kids say thank you. As a parent, I love to hear my kids say thank you. How much more so would your heavenly father like to hear a thank you from you that says, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to just stretch out in this day. Hallelujah. Could we clap our hands unto the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. God bless you today. Hallelujah.